I'm here with Scott Schultz, the division chair for science, one of eight divisions here at Delta College. And Scott, what, what does the science division encompass? What, what's in the science division? So as science chair, I'm overseeing several different disciplines. They include wow. biology, geology and geography, chemistry, and physics. Okay. Um, how's the enrollment these days? I hear that there's uh, a lot of demand for the uh, STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math uh, students, uh, but um, it, it's, it's one of those odd pipelines where big demand, not much uh, supply. Um, is that still true? There is quite a bit of demand for our core courses, those that are going into the STEM fields, and so those remain very, very strong. Uh, there's been a small decrease in the gen ed programs as populations here at Delta, the number of students have decreased a little bit in the recent year, but still the overall demand is very strong. Uh, are you a parent? I am. Okay. This is a two-part question. All right. I'm always interested in how do we expose, what is the best way to expose young people, young learners, to um, science and, well, science, uh, math, engineering, and technology? And that's the part A. And part B, uh, after exposed, what is the best way to uh, encourage an interest in uh, young learners in science in particular? What, what do you recommend as an educator slash parent? I think most kids start off with an innate interest in science. They're curious and the best way to keep that interest is to allow them to actually go through the process of science. Pr the s process of science is very hands-on, is very active. It's, it's discovering things as you go along, as you um, work through experimentation. And, and you know, how many of us, as we were kids, took things apart. We may not have always gotten them back together and, right. <laughs> you know. But we'll sure get it apart. But we sure got it apart. But, mm -hmm. you know, kids these days aren't necessarily doing that. They're on the video games instead. And, mm -hmm. um, and we're not doing that in the science classrooms enough, I don't think. And so as mm -hmm. we're training teachers, especially the elementary ed teachers, as they're going through college science classes, those classes also have to be very hands-on. We can't put them in the same class next to the pre-med students that are required to learn the names of every muscle. Mm -hmm. We need to have classes that allow them to go through the scientific process so that when they're out teaching, they can do the same thing with their students. Hmm. Recently, the uh, president, uh, President Obama, has uh, advocated uh, pre-K uh, education for quality pre-K education for every child uh, in America. Should science be a part of that? Science could be a part of that. There is... Um, Should science yes. be a part of that? And I have a hard time answering that in that I think at that young age, when kids are playing, they actually are doing some of the stuff that's with science. Where they're lacking mm. behind in that pre-K really is getting on board with reading. And so I think that that still should be the focus of the pre-K education is reading because that opens the doors to all education no matter what the discipline is. And I think the playing can lend itself to understanding science and, and, and building that curiosity that will then hopefully develop in elementary schools. Scott Schultz, I want to thank you for coming in and uh, sharing uh, some concepts in uh, education. Uh, perhaps uh, we uh, really didn't take the chance to talk about being division chair, but I, I, when I get a scientist, I have to ask those, uh, those uh, science education questions. So. Uh, thanks for coming in, and I uh, really appreciate you sharing with us. It's been a pleasure, Earl. Thank you.